Well, I'm absolutely over the moon to be back in Nozawa Onsen, a place I've been to five years ago. It is a magical, magical place. John, I can't thank you enough for finding me in Tokyo and getting me sorted out on the straight and narrow. This town is one of the oldest ski towns in Japan, and I love it. Everything is so good about this place. Alleys, laneways, restaurants, holes in the wall. I just wanted to show you. I wanted to bring you here and let you discover it with me. How are you feeling about it? Man, I'm pretty excited. Uh, look, all the years of coming to Japan, being up in the ski fields, mate, I've never been here. I heard a lot about it. I'm, I'm really stoked you brought me here. It's got a lot of old school stuff. The onsens look really cool, man, as we walked in, you know, it looked amazing. I hear the food scene's pretty good. And we are on resort, so we're on the mountain. We don't have to travel far, and we've got everything we want at our doorstep. It's awesome. Yeah. Now, usually I'm pretty low key, but I am so excited. I'm jumping out of my skin, mate. I'm so happy to be here. Let's go discover. Let's do it, eh? Mate, we're right next door to a cooking onsen, so pretty much like right in front of us, we've got onsen eggs, you know, onsen tamago, and we've got red bean dumplings that have all been cooked. I mean, there's still steam coming up off, off these um, baskets full of water. Um, you know, this whole area is known for its locally sourced products, but also there's a lot of mushrooms. They, they've got dried fungus, white fungi, corn that's cooked in the onsen as well and grown locally. You know, there's so much as apples. It's, it's, what this town's all about, you know, it's Nozawa Onsen for a reason. Yeah. And the reason is that they live, breathe, eat onsen, mm. you know, amazing. Okay, if you come to Nozawa, this is a very iconic spot here where they make the oyaki, the dumpling, the steamed dumpling. Uh, I've got apple and cinnamon, what do you I got, have I there? I've got pork, mate. Yeah. I'm yeah. impressed with your Japanese, it's getting so good. <laughs> it's getting better and better, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> so I'm going to chow down on this and then I saw a tap room up around the corner. I'm gonna go and have a beer. You, you, would you like oh, to join me? Man, a beer sounds so good, huh? Let's go do it. And just like that, we took the opportunity to go to the source of the wonderful beer at Labushi. Is it very close? Yeah, but cross. You should go to the brewery right now. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll finish this beer first. <laughs> Can we finish the beer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Okay, boys, awesome. That's a strong beer. <laughs> we left the village of Nozawa on a short drive to Anglo Japanese Brewing Company. Upon arrival, we located owner and founder, Tom. So Tom, welcome to Snow Chef. Thanks for coming. No problem. Um, I was up at your tap room before, yeah, yeah. having a uh, King Kong knee drop. There you go, yeah. Great beer, very, very enjoyable. Good, good. So, um, yeah, we decided to come down to the brewery. We got uh, suggested by your staff to come down here. And um, here we are, great little uh, venue, I guess, or big establishment that you've yeah. got here. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's essentially an old school, so it's tough to find a property, but this kind of came through in the end, and uh, it's not always the easiest place, but we make it work. So how does a uh, Englishman end up in Japan making beer? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, I came over here probably cracking on for 10 years ago, yeah. and fell in love with Nazawa and then uh, met my wife Emiko in, in London. And then we, we decided to come to Japan for a bit. And Nazar was my first choice. Um, and then, yeah, we never left. I mean, it's quite a small uh, village, but where it's unique in Japan is you have, like, the village is very close to the, to the, to the mountain, so you can literally walk from the center of town up to the lifts. Um, and there's not anywhere else that's quite like that. So you really have like a village on the mountain. Obviously, like you say, there's great little restaurants, bars and whatnot. Um, obviously, yeah, our tap room and the little pilot kit there as well. So for, with that in mind, for setting up a brewery, do you have yep. to get all your equipment and your um, ingredients from all different parts of the world or? Yeah, I mean, we, we try and make it, use as much local stuff as we can. Mm -hmm. Obviously, being in Japan, it's not like it's known for like malt manufacturing. There's very little, so like, I mean, the malt you see behind us, we bring in from Germany. 
So yeah, it's a bit of a mix of stuff like the best stuff we can get from all over, and then whatever you know we can we can use that's good quality locally. Yeah, wow. So, is there any um, particular favourite beer that you have at, in your range, or they're all I mean, all I, your babies? I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love them all. Like yeah. we really we we don't always try and stick to style or like try and you know be recreate a certain thing. So they're all quite unique. Um, so that's pretty interesting. But yeah, I mean, they're all, you know, they're all different, all unique. I love them all. It just mm. depends on my mood. You know, it's really, yeah. I couldn't say there's one specific flavor that, that I like. So one thing I'm always interested about is uh, people who come into or get into a brewing game. Is there a light bulb moment? Do you wake up one day and go, this is what I want to do? Or how does it come about? Yeah, it, it, it was for me or like yeah. for us, with Emmy like, I mean, obviously as well. Um, I mean, I've been brewing, I started off home brewing and then yeah. sort of got more and more into it. Um, worked in some breweries in the UK and then yeah after like I say after about a year of being here in, in the Zawa we were sort of we had been doing a few things and it was just like right let's open a brewery. Thank you my, my man. My pleasure, my pleasure, thanks for coming. No problem. So this is what Nozawa is also known for, it's many many onsens. I know how much you love the onsens John, have you got an onsen towel for me? Prepared, ready to go. Let's go into this onsen. The zao has got a number of free onsen, so really? yeah, yeah. So let's get in there, huh? After the onsen, our food thoughts drifted to Tepanyaki, and there, in the heart of the village, stood the restaurant Tanuki. It was straight upstairs for an intimate Tepanyaki session with Chef Yuji. JD, we've made it over to Tanuki Tepanyaki with Yuji. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Mate, look, I've never had this before. How's that? Never ever been to Teppanyaki in my life. Really? Yep, thought That's I'd not, jump that not on you. a bad you. place for the first time. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. you are from London? Yeah, that's right. Tell me all about yourself. Uh, well, I'm born and bred in London, uh, but I'm suppose, I suppose I'm what you would call Anglo-Japanese. My mum's Japanese, my dad's ah, English. Awesome. So I grew up eating the food um, here and there. I suppose, and uh, yeah, um, only been working as a chef full time for a couple of years. But uh, before that, I did a science degree and an office job, which was a bit lukewarm for me. And I packed <laughs> it in and I decided I wanted to go back to, to doing what I was doing when I was a student, which was working in restaurants uh, front and back. Well, I guess I was pretty well known for throwing um, gyoza parties. Um, it wasn't always gyoza, but I mean, how do we impress? Uh, like, well, it's nothing fancy. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. you know, something that my mates hadn't eaten before. And yeah. If they had, it was normally a bit, a bit rubbish. So. Gyoza and beer. How good is that? Yeah, gyoza and beer. Mate, what are you going to be cooking up for us today? Uh, today you're going to be having the, um, I suppose the, the star of the show on our menu this year. It's the steak course, which is the main course. And um, we do two kinds of steak here. You guys are going to get to try both of them. They're uh, Wagyu sirloins from Nagano. This stuff doesn't leave the prefecture. It comes from a pretty small farm. And uh, both cows that the steaks come from are exactly the same until they're split up and fed differently. Uh, one of them's only fed grass and grain, like just regular cow diet. Whereas the other guy, he's fed apples twice a day. I suppose what I enjoyed the most about uh, cooking back in my uni days was uh, making other people happy and for me I enjoy I enjoy yep. eating it's one of my favorite things to do. Yep. so when I can give other people that experience that's uh, for that me pleasure that's, hard. that's worth yeah working yourself down to the bone for awesome so, so you keep touching the steak like a baby man what's that all about uh, it's just to make sure that they're right because it's very high in fat yep um, you do end up uh, getting some of that fat stuff underneath, so trying to avoid that, preventing the formation of the crust. Mm -hmm. Well mate, tell me in regards to your menus, what, what goes on with your menus? Uh, the menu, um, well, given that I don't have as much experience as uh, other people, this is my first time coming mm. up with a menu, and you know, when I joined, I spoke to Anna and said, look, I'm gonna need a bit of help. So she, uh, Anna's the executive chef of uh, the group. Of the group, right, and, yep. And uh, yeah, she, she gave me like a, a format for what they wanted. Yep. Uh, some of the key uh, things that they wanted on the menu, like the apple-fed beef and the, uh, 
also the trout, which is yeah. very famous in the Ghana. It's Iwana, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, we went from there, we bounced ideas off of each other, and uh, in the end, well, we have the menu that you can see there today. That's some fresh wasabi for you there. Oh, awesome. So, with regard to Anna, tell me about Anna, mate. I mean, um, well, she's uh, an Australian chef. Uh, not much older than me, only a year older than me, and um, she's been running the helm here uh, since last year, so her second year as executive chef here. And um, yeah, she's great, she's got loads of experience, um, very strong character. Sure, um, how would I find her? Uh, she's probably downstairs right now, getting so ready So once service. we finish this, you mean I can go downstairs and get yeah, yeah, and then you can chat to her? Her all about me. This is <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what do we do with the wasabi? Uh, so the wasabi, uh, the key to grating this stuff up is to press quite hard yep. and to go in circles. That way you, oh. you, you break up the cell structure just enough that you get rid of some of that heat on the grater yep. and uh, you're left with the, more of the other flavors. So wasabi is part of the horseradish family, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, cold climate growing. Well, mate, um, I'm going to tuck on into this food, sensational food. I reckon we go downstairs and have a chat to Anna, huh? Anna, thank you for having me here. No, you're more than welcome. We're sitting down in your Tanuki bar, mm -hmm. which is your like little crib. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. Um, it is the basement underneath my main restaurant um, and it's a pretty cool spot. We do live music. Tell me about your career. I mean, Japan is a, is a destination. It's really hard to be a chef, a foreign chef in. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm pretty lucky. I've got really good um, support, um, but it's, it is difficult to... What made you come here? I got a phone call. Um, my partner and I had... Brutally honest. Look at you. Yeah, no. Got a phone call. We'd quit our jobs and we're traveling around Tasmania with yep. a ute and a swag. Wow. And yeah, uh, someone I worked with, Brad, before, mm -hmm. um, he gave me a call. He was like, I just bought a lodge. I need a chef. What are you up to? Let's just go. Yeah. And now you're here. Yeah. Third consecutive season. Logistics. Tell me all about it. Um, yeah, maintaining a good relationship with suppliers is, um, is interesting. We've got a really, really good local butcher who does great work um the two different stakes up at Tepan yep. and we have a lot of yeah different different things going on um but yeah he's really supportive really great uh we'll find things for us if we really want them yep um veg wise veg wise is difficult there's a little co-op in Iyama that i like to go to that has really awesome mushrooms yep. um and yeah, we kind of switch between two two different suppliers yeah. for veggies, depending on who's got what. It is seriously hard in the mountains because you have so many inconsistencies. Yeah, for like sure. you have like so when it dumps, you can't get trucks through. Yeah. And then all of a sudden your prices go, go up. Go up, yeah. And then all of a sudden you can't even you can't even run your menu because yeah. your menu changes because you can't get that beetroot that you got at the beginning of the season. Yeah. That type of stuff. You you are part of an umbrella, you're an executive chef and umbrella company. Yeah. So you are the chef of here, mm -hmm. in the middle, yep. and up above. Yep. So yeah. how do you design a menu? Um, I like to uh, try and bridge the, bridge the gap, I guess, between yep. um, hardcore Western and hardcore Japanese. Um, so mm. it's familiar, but also interesting. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, fusion. Yeah, fusion. Yeah, yeah cool. And it's difficult too, I think, being Australian because <clears throat> I mean, I'm half Greek, half Dutch. I grew up eating a whole heap of different weird food. Yeah, right. And yeah. so like when people are like, what do you, what, what's your style? It's like, I just like good food. Yep, it's flavor. Yeah, exactly. It's all about flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And in Australia, we have so many ingredients yeah, exactly. and so many cultures and so everything is a fusion. The region's really famous for their apples. They grow really slowly, so yep. they're super, super sweet. Yep. Um, and then people- How long? How long do they grow for? Yeah. Uh, it depends on the variety, but usually um, I'm pretty sure about eight months. It's a long time. Yeah, right? it is. So yeah. you develop that sweetness like a grape, huh? Yeah. The longer you, yeah. the longer they leave the grapes on the vine, yeah. the sweeter they become. Yeah. yeah. So would you recommend anyone for me to see in this town that has a tradition in regards to apple? Yeah, there's um there's this really 
uh, old family run business called St. Anton yeah, right. um, in the main street and they they do all sorts of stuff with apples. They have um, uh, at any given time about half a dozen um, varieties of apple juice and um, heaps of different jams and compotes and stuff yeah, like right. that. Yeah. So, it's, so it's an old school family yeah. here in the region, you've yeah. been here forever. Yeah, pretty much. Their, um, their son, um, the, the son and the, he's the head chef, Ken Ken. He's um, an ex-pro skier. He's got like, I think two national championships and yeah. Wow. Yeah. Would um, you recommend me to see him? Oh, for sure. He's such a, yeah. he's such a cool dude. Yeah. Cool. Really interesting. Awesome. Yeah. Well, look, you know what? I know you're a busy lady and I know you've got to run a big kitchen. Yeah. So I'm going to continue sucking on a yeah, sake cool. and get onto it. Ken Ken, thank you for having me, mate. Thank you too. Tell me, House St. Anton, yeah. how did that come about, man? Dinosaur Onsen is, uh, we have the partnership with uh, St. Anton in Austria. Oh, uh, yeah. A famous snow resort in, one of the famous snow resorts in Austria. Yeah, because so my grandfather and so my dad also uh, lived in Austria. Get out. Yeah, wow. they were they were the famous skier too. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. So that because uh, Saint Anton really, really, really respect for the yeah. Saint Anton and that because what a lot of people don't know is that actually you're a famous skier as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a famous skier, so you're pretty humble about that because you talk about your family before, but you actually got a pretty good career in it. And um, how long did it last for? So from six years old until 24 wow. years wow. old. So Crazy, from six to 24. Almost, almost 20 years. Yeah? Yeah. So in, in the middle of all that, how did you develop the passion to be a chef? Because that's pretty crazy. Uh, so all of them, my family loves love to eat. Yeah. So, and also my mum was pretty good chef yep. at home yep so she always made very very good foods for me yep made by hand and so with care and love yeah so yeah then because I was I love to cook too so so we're sitting in your restaurant now which is like something that's been here for a long time in your family mm -hmm. I mean I look around it's got a lot of history to it and you know the fact that we're sitting in a European style restaurant up in the mountains in Nazawa. Tell me about your menu because it looks it looks amazing. Thank you. So uh, I trained my cooking in Osaka. Yep. At a French cuisine restaurant. Yeah. And so you can see that yeah. when you read your menu. It's, yeah. I mean, so my base technique is French yep. style, but uh, Correct. so I don't want to be classic French mm. cuisine here in Nazawa. Yep. Uh, I want to have more care about local products. Yeah, so yeah. It's you got good products, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that from so, around town. Yeah. I just wanted to cook the, that, that local ingredients yeah. with, with respect. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's sort, of, sort of respect in a tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's also, amazing. Yeah. Well, mate, I know we've come in at the end of service because we couldn't get here earlier because you're very busy, aren't you? Anna from Tanuki advised us to come down and talk to you. Yeah. 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 She said about, we were talking about the apples. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, oh, you should, you know, you know, Ken Ken's mum makes the apple jams. And yeah. Yeah. All the chutneys and everything. Man, I don't want to take up any more of your time, but thank you very much. Thank you so much. Cheers. We finished our night visiting Nozawa Onsen's famous leopard lady, perusing the streets for more food and enjoying the delicious takoyaki, the Japanese snack, octopus balls. Well, our time is up here in the lovely Nozawa. I so enjoy coming here every single time. It is a marvelous place. So much hidden amongst the alleys, the laneways, we got to discover some pretty cool people. Oh mate, it's definitely on my comeback list for sure. Look, there's so much here. 
uh, like you said, like you mentioned, there's lots of food, there's, there's everything. I mean, we're standing in front of a, you know, cooking, I said, look at it. Of it's, all things. I know, this is where the local villagers come and cook. I said before, it's on a mountain, it's, it's a perfect location. Yeah, definitely coming back.